with you immediately. Phone number, emails, for public to please lodge your complaint of that particular passport office. And I assure you, we will do the right thing. The attitude of a fraction, a very negligible fraction of immigration officers will not cast aspersion on the good efforts of the larger majority. We will never allow that to happen. Please, it is important we let people know nobody expects you to pay a dime extra for passports as well, except for the statutory money that is required. Do not give bribe to anybody because there is no reason to give bribe. Your passports are there. If they say the passports are not there, please get in touch with us. We will provide the contact details and we'll take actions in an appropriate manner. So I want to thank you for this support and also to also tell you one or two things that we're trying to do to make passport administration easier and seamless for Nigerians. We want it to be a sweet experience. We want you, we want the process to be so specific for Nigerians. So some of the uh, just yesterday, we met with some, a solution provider, one of the service providers, and we, particularly the immigration service, the ministry, and of course, the service provider. We went through the application and pointed out one or two things that we want, you know, upgraded. Because either we like it or not, Nigerians are paying for this service. And when Nigerians pay for the service, it's not a privilege that he gets the best of services. It's the rights. Nigerians must get the best of service. So very soon, hopefully by November, right? No, by December. By December, by the grace of God, people will not need to go to passport offices and they are snapping you in the passport of his on your neck, on your eye. Oh, come on. This is 2023. People will be able to upload their passport photographs online. It's with specification. When you apply for visas all over the world, you upload your passports online. Nobody goes there to do so. We are also advancing to that level. That will save time when people go to passport offices. Also, your supporting documents should be uploaded uh, online. So all your supporting documents, you upload online, when you go to passport office, it will just be for the purpose of perfection. So within five minutes, you have got the passport office. So it, it will want to go and end to the era. When people, when you want to go to the passport office, you know you have to cancel the whole day, knowing that you go for passport, and your whole day is wasted. Your time, your resources. We have to bring an end to that and give people sweet experience. The, what I call the Nigerian experience. So we, and by doing that, Instead of the passport office, maybe capturing only 400 a day. Because you've cut out the issue of uh, paperwork, you've cut out the issue of uh, picture, and you will not attend to six, seven hundred more people. It means we will be able to give more dates to people. You know, I will not call it more people. So these are some of the innovations we are bringing. And also, I have to also state this. We are doing all these things, even though we know what the state rate is, but of course, we are not increasing passport fee. We are not, because we, the government understands that Nigerians 
This is, I mean, there are challenges. I base my things based on data, statistics, and empirical facts. We have not concluded on the number because we are going to look at the demand, the numbers in different areas. That's what we're determining. Maybe we're creating one, two, and all those things are the things we would do before we take off. So that's why we're not taking off immediately. As I said, we're taking off in uh, uh, December. So between now and then, we will, of course, come up with this um, front offices. But the issue is that it's something that it's in the contract, or it's been in their contract all this while, and we're saying we must activate it now to give people choice and to be able to give people a bit of comfort and convenience. So, but in terms of the details, we will get back to you on that. Then you spoke about the reliability of our passport. Well, you know, there are so many factors that affect the reliability of the passport. One has to do with uh, what we call perception management, you know, and a lot of these do not fall within the purview of the Ministry of Interior. You know, a lot of these foreign affairs, finance, and so many. So, uh, but I can talk on behalf of the government that we're doing everything to create a sweet experience. We're doing everything to make sure that uh, the company attains that economic progress and that self-dependency, you understand, that discourages migration. <laughs> you know, once you are able to discourage migration, once you are self-sufficient and you can take care of certain things, the urge to travel, it's not really too there except for holidays. Countries will want you to come. But when there's a perception that, oh, once he comes, Oh, maybe on visa that he runs away, he will, he will not want to go back to his country. Countries will say, don't come. So it's an issue of law of demand <laughs> and supply. So as a government, we're doing everything possible to change the story in a renewed hope manner and create a new experience and a renewed hope for Nigerians that will lead to economic emancipation, that will lead to uh, economic development and national sufficiency in terms of um, our per capita income. Once this is done, I believe that the rating will increase. And also, we are, from a policy perspective, we are also, we'll set up a committee under the uh, chairmanship of the BAMSEC, and um, I think the secretary, the director of joint services is the secretary of the committee. The CG Immigration is there, and a couple of stakeholders. We are looking at, uh, I mean, the committee's um, um, responsibility is to review our passport and visa policy. Because we, are, Nigeria is not a trash, and we cannot be treated as such. It's unacceptable. Visa is based on reciprocity anywhere in the world anywhere in the world, even by uh, international conventions, is based on reciprocity. And that's why we are seriously looking at this visa on arrival policy. There is no point somebody comes from one country who does not allow me to enter based on visa on arrival and he comes to Nigeria and he gets these assets that I don't have in his country. I don't think it's the right thing to do. So we have a committee in place already. I think they have two more weeks. So, uh, yes, you have about two more weeks to submit the report for, to me. So this will help us to review our policy. So once there is this issue that people treat you as shit, and you say, no, you treat me as a garbage, I treat you as such, people will come to the table and say, let's talk. What is it? Because I tell people, majority of people that come to Nigeria, they come to Nigeria to make money. <laughs> let's call it spade. A spade. So you come to Nigeria to make money, and you have this free access to Nigeria. We want to go to your country to spend money, and yet you make it difficult for us. <laughs> so one way or the other, we're looking at uh, activation of the principle of reciprocity in visa and uh, passport issues for us to be able to bring people on the table and be able to renegotiate some of these um, country agreement, which will be done not by us in 
terms of the negotiation were by foreign um, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Then you spoke about fast tracking. Somebody asked a question with that to fast track fast tracking of passports. Yes, even in the US, even in the UK, there is fast track. Passport fast track, we have it in almost all the countries. In Nigeria, we don't have it at the moment. But to me, my, my main concern, which is the priority for me as a person, is that even the least person deserves a good service. You know, I believe if we make it a standing principle, and in reality, that maximum of two weeks, you must get your passport. That is good for an average Nigeria. But if you now need an urgent passport, which is possible, we should also not close the door to you, especially if you can afford it. So we must now make sure that giving people a fast track uh, route is not what will make us to deprive a normal Nigerian of his rights. So we must clarify this or else when the law when a law is too loose abuse might become inevitable some people oh, we we'll do fast travel oh, yeah bring money bring money we, we are trying to curb corruption in this process so we must first of all ensure if you apply and they capture you two weeks you don't have your passport then there will be problems you must have your passport two weeks but if you cannot wait for two weeks, then the fast track can be an option. But it shouldn't be that because of fast track, people will not get passport for months. We must discourage that. So this is part of the new passport and visa policy that we are actually looking into. But on the proviso and condition that people that can't afford fast track are not denied of their rights. That's the only condition. Then you spoke about um, NIMSI. Um, yes, we have a meeting, I think it's for next week. NIMSI, the service providers, and NIS. We want to, I want to use this opportunity to also appreciate Mr. President for domiciling NIMSI the Ministry of Interior. It makes coordination seamless and easy. So what we are trying to do will look at the technological enhancement processes, how there will be seamless handshake, you know, behind the scene between NIMSI and uh, NIS, such that the, um, the database can mirror the other one. It becomes an easy thing. It's like pulling from one pool. You know, so it's it it. Um, so we are looking at that, and we want to tell you, we understand that that's a major challenge in the application process, and we cannot um, solve the problem of passport issues without sorting this problem. So you can be rest assured, it's part of what we are working on, and we have a meeting for next week between the two agencies here in the ministry and we will be able to work out how to synergize and ensure that there is an interoperable uh, handshake between the two uh, agencies in terms of their systems and tools. So you can be sure of that. Then compliance fee, 5,000. Well, I'm hearing it for the first time. And I want to say this very clearly. With what we have done and with the determination that we have, it is left to we will plead with Nigerians to please assist us to succeed. Do not pay compliance fee. Do not pay compliance fee if there's anything like that. There is nothing in the book about compliance fee. As I have said, do not pay for your rights. Your passport is your right. Do not pay for that. And with the number that we will give to you and the details, the contact details, you will be able to report if there's anything or you're not treated well 
in any of our center. We are, we are public officers. I understand, and I know my team, we all understand that we are being paid via taxpayers' money. We are here to serve you. And hence, we will not request you to pay for your rights. Please, let's take note of that. Nobody should give bribe. Nobody should give compliance fee in, or any money, whatever, in whichever guys. There is nothing like that. Please, let us educate our people to know. Then, you ask what the passport can do for us. Well, uh, passport is a travel document. That's number one. The main responsibility of passport is to be a travel document and to be a means of identification. But still, it will not take the place of driver's license. You know, it will have certain, so it won't take the place. But nevertheless, I think maybe the, what my brother in Arise, you are basically trying to say is the multiplicity of um, identification systems, right? Arise? Yes. I believe that's what you are asking. Because your passport is your means of identification and it's also a travel document. Those are the two things anywhere in the world that passport does. If there's a third one, I don't know. I'm not saying there is no, no, but to the best of my knowledge, these are the two things. But if we talk about harmonizing our database, which is one thing I'm very keen about through uh, NIMSI, because I see no reason, and I have said it times without number, when there should be a roommate for telcos, there should be a roommate for BVN, there should be a roommate for VIN, with an identification number, there should be a roommate uh, uh, driver license, and like biometric data everywhere. So what we are trying to do is to harmonize the database, make sure that there's a, a single point of contact, a centralized system that all our identity um, all our identity data are domiciled. This is what we are trying to do, and I can assure you it's on track. And very soon, by the grace of God, Nigerians will see the, will see the result of the effort we are trying to put in. Lastly, before I go, um, I forgot to add this to you, as part of the features that we are trying to add to our passport application system is also passport tracking system. It's very important. When you apply for passport, you should be able to use maybe your phone number to track the passport online. So if your passport, you've been captured, you see captured, uh, approved, printed, dispatched, you understand? Nigerians should be able to know at every situation not now that, oh, you have a dark eye, you are waiting for text message, you are waiting for this, for them to tell you your passport is ready. You should be able to track your passport. And if there's an unnecessary delay, then you can escalate and we will be ready to, to listen to you. So these are some of the uh, customer service experiences that we're trying.